Hello and good afternoon. My name is Toby. Today I will be presenting the olive fruit fly, also known as the Bactocera olea. Howdy, my name is Buggy, and I will be representing the glassy winged sharpshooter, otherwise known as the Homolodisca ventropinus. Today we'll be debating whether the glassy winged sharpshooter, or the olive fruit fly, causes the greatest loss for olive oil producers. Stay tuned for these bugs got me bugging out. But uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's get things kicking off. The olive fruit fly is a widespread pest that feeds exclusively <clears throat> on wild and cultivated olives. The olive fruit fly is originally from Africa, but has made its way across the world into the Canary Islands, Mexico, California, Middle East, China, and Central America. They are only about 0.2 inches long <clears throat> and have clear wings with veins that go throughout without go throughout the wings with a dark spot at the wing tip. Their larvae are yellowish white colored maggots that have a pointed head. So more about the larvae. The larvae will begin to pupate in the summer and later on in the fall leave the fruit. Once they do this, they will go under the tree into the ground for the winter. <clears throat> they will not emerge again until the spring once they emerge, they will lay eggs un in unharvested fruit from the previous year's crop. Olive fruit flies feed exclusively on olive fruits. <clears throat> they also cause damage to olives mul in multiple ways, whether it be from feeding off of them, <clears throat> laying eggs in them, pulp destruction, or fruit drop. This pest can be capable of destroying 100% of a producer's crop. In some European districts, they cannot even grow tables of olives because managing and controlling these pests is not economical for them. It is believed that the cost and likelihood of crop damage from the olive fruit flies have the potential to eliminate olive culture in home gardens or commercially in the state of California. Hmm. Interesting. You're bringing some really good points there. But here's my opening. So, the glassy wing sharpshooter is pretty large. It's about approximately half an inch long, and it's uh, mostly brown. It has some white spots uh, and some yellow spots on the abdomen. Uh, but really, it's, it's a really small little creature. Um, and during March and April, the glassy winged sharpshooter will actually lay some eggs. And they do it about 28 at a time. And they're going to hatch in about mm, 12 days. So it's pretty pervasive just in that sense alone. The glassy winged sharpshooter was actually discovered in the southeastern part of the United States, basically only eating xylem fluid which has a very small amount of nutrition. So that means that they have to get a lot of it to be able to sustain anything. Uh, and so they're ingesting tons throughout the day. And it's gonna lead to extruding a lot of the water out because they're just taking the nutrients and then all the water just gets flushed out of their system. And so with that happening, the glassy wing sharpshooter is a holder of bacteria that is found in the xylem, right? So they're flushing out all the water left in the nutri nutrients and left inside them is uh, xylella fastidiosa. And so with this being said, uh, it's going to be a very serious disease that is going to hit a lot of the crops um, really commonly found inside of like uh, pure disease and whatnot and it's going to affect a lot of the greenery inside of like olives uh, for example and so basically while feeding from the plant uh, that has been effective affected the plant is going to get hurt and so the glassy wing sharpshooter gets the bacteria xyla fastidiosa and puts itself in the mouse part of, in the mouth parts of its host and during seasonal flights the sharpshooter will transfer the disease all over the United States. So already we can kind of see that this is going to be really dangerous just because of the migration. But Peer's disease, which affects olives and other greenery, is most notably found in olives within California and Florida. I kind of talked about the southeastern part of the United States. And so the glassing and sharpshooter is definitely to blame for this uh, and is definitely to be blamed for the profound amount of uh, disease found in California and Florida. Um, because of the fact that we know about the migration, right? And so infected trees can even stay alive for a couple of years before dying. Um, and a lot of them typically are very young, and so they're very susceptible to this Pierce disease, and it's going to hurt the production. So much so that the global production between 1960 and 2005 uh, changed from 20% lower average yields, which is really bad. So it's stated that actually 83% of oleander plants um, have been exposed to xylella within California. And that means that it's almost guaranteed whenever the migration happens that some plants, if not all plants, are going to get infected by this. So what does this kind of tell us? Well, it tells us that researchers are suggesting people to simply remove the pests 
when found more permanently, when found or more permanently, uh, find Xylella fastidiosa rootstocks that would be resistant to the virus. A more biologically controlled course would be the parasitic wasp. We could introduce it and it would be able to take out and kind of kill off some of this stuff. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a natural predator thing. It could kind of work, but it could also have some negative effects if they become, you know, overrun, of course. And so that's going to conclude my present, my uh, opening statement, uh, and we'll leave it up to you to rebuttal. Okay, so I was listening to all the points that you're proving or saying and all the information that you have with you. So the first thing is with the glassy wing sharpshooter, I can see they are not as widespread as the olive fruit flies. <clears throat> During your introduction, you only mentioned that they were really only prevalent in California and Florida, if I can remember correctly. Whereas the olive fruit fly is prevalent in many different countries, including the US, as I mentioned in my opening. However, the olive fruit flies are not present in Florida, which y'all's the glassy wing sharpshooters were. Also, Sorry. Also, the glassy wing sharpshooter is over four times the size of the olive fruit fly. This makes it to where it is much easier to see not only on your fruit, but just every day on your farm or around the, uh, around the land. Mm. You have some good points. I'll have to think about that. So I would say that your argument about how the glassy wing sharpshooter is only in California and Florida, and thus it is not as effective in shutting down the olive industry, really isn't, you know, it's a little short-sighted in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because the majority of all of fruit production is actually in those states. And so because of how pervasive it is, it's going to be really important that inside those states we make sure that the pervasiveness goes down, of course. Um, and so the fact that the olive fruit fly lays eggs and eats olive fruits directly should make it so much easier to be able to stop this. We can introduce something that is able to just get rid of that function, uh, whereas the glassy wing sharpshooter is going to be able to do so much more damage in a different sense. And so that's kind of going to conclude my, um, my rebuttal. Okay, so I understand what you're saying there, but the olive fruit fly is not only more prevalent than the glassy wing sharpshooter, but it has also been around a lot longer than it and it has yet to been, be stopped. <clears throat> I believe that this disproves your point about it being easier to kill and protect the olive farms. Also, treating these olive farms costs a lot of money, which <clears throat> some farms will not be able to incur these costs. Therefore, either playing by chance that the all the fruit flies won't kill off their crops. <clears throat> and then you also mentioned how you can barely see the glassy wing sharpshooter, even though it is one and a half inches long. Imagine trying to see the olive fruit fly before it arrives at the farm or olive plant. Also, you mentioned yourself how you could simply introduce another insect that would kill off the sharpshooters. Hmm. So what do you have to say to that? Well, I guess I would say that, or maybe argue that just being around longer doesn't inherently provide value and make something more dangerous as a species. I mean, you see many species that, uh, you know, are just really good survivalists and are good survivalists because they can have so many children so quickly. And so you mentioned that treating the olive farms costs a lot of money. And while yes, that's kind of true, as long as you do it once and you create a good pesticide for that, um, after creating like an olive plant that's no longer susceptible to Xylella fastid fastidiosa, you kind of have your problem solved. Whereas the olive fruit fly is going to like kill the olive plant um, and then laying eggs and eating it, which might be a bit more of a, an issue there. So I can kind of see both sides there. Okay, so I think it's about time to wrap things up. So I'm going to say my final piece and I'll allow you to say your final piece. It is vital that we continue to learn about the olive fruit fly. <clears throat> With how detrimental this fly has been to our olive production worldwide, it is crucial that we find a way to truly slow them down. With the glassy wing sharpshooter not being as worldwide, I believe that we must first try and learn more about the olive fruit fly and prioritize it <clears throat> and how we can help all these countries combat it. Who knows, maybe there's a solution that can help all these countries <clears throat> uh, protect our olive farms and from both of these insects, not just the olive fruit fly. <clears throat> However, I'm not moved that the, all, that the glassy wing sharpshooters are more destructive for olive producers simply due to the fact that they are only prevalent in two states in America. The olive fruit flies have also been used in research many times over the effectiveness of certain pesticides or chemicals. I believe that if we resolve the issues with these olive fruit flies, then we will be able to quickly act on the glassy wing sharpshooters that have also been terrorizing our olive producers in America. Lastly, almost every day 
we have flies that fly around us and annoy us just with that little buzzing sound all around us. <clears throat> These flies can also be studied and determine how we can mitigate the enormous population and abundant species of flies that exist all around the world. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and close out then with my final statement. So as we know, the glassy wing chartreuse is a holder of bacteria found in xylem, xylem fastidiosa, a very serious disease to a lot of crops that I talked about last time or on my opening statement that actually has 20% lower yields. Um, and so that's kind of killing the olive oil um, market and making it a lot more expensive, right? And so the glassy wing chartreuse is really important to study because of the fact that you can figure out how to prevent diseases that co uh, come from migration. For example, we have things like uh, COVID-19 that may have uh, started over in Asia and was able to transport over to America due to people migrating and whatnot. And so because of that, um, because of just uh, flies in general that are coming over um, and the olive, uh, olive fruit fly and the glass wing sharpshooter, both of these are really important to study. But I would say the glass wing sharpshooter is actually more important uh, because of the fact that it's going to um, you know, be harder to create a pesticide and introduce a, a, a thing to be able to come in and kill it and get rid of it. So that would probably be my final piece. But thank you all for joining us for these bugs got me bugging out. Uh, I appreciate uh, Toby for coming in. <laughs> Yes, with me. thank you, Buggy. Thank you, thank you all for watching this. Hope you all enjoyed.